Hello and welcome to Baichu's IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following statements about Startup Village Entrepreneurship Program is our correct? It is a subcomponent of Dindayal Antyodayojana, National Rural Livelihood Mission of the Ministry of Panchayati Raj. Any rural poor who is willing to be entrepreneurial and self-reliant is eligible to be part of this program. Which of these statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Startup Village Entrepreneurial Program. When we look into the options, yes, the first statement is partially right. Why? Because this happens to be the subcomponent of Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana, but this is not of the Ministry of Panchayati Raj, but this is of the Ministry of Rural Development. Since it is the Ministry of Rural Development, the first option is wrong. What is the Startup Village Entrepreneurial Entrepreneurship program. There are multiple schemes run by the government of India to prevent migration of the rural people into the urban areas. One such example is the Mandrega. Similar to Mandrega, we have this program initiated by the government of India, which wants to prevent the migration of the rural people into urban areas. How? The government of India has initiated this entrepreneurship program, whereby people in the rural area will be given advisory on three important objectives. One, how they can come up with new idea and innovation. Second, they would be giving all the awareness programs about it. And third, the financial ecosystem will also be established by the government of India. So when we speak about startup village entrepreneurship program, so those people who are present in the rural area will be provided all the knowledge that is required so that they can set up local enterprises and at the same time, they can empower themselves and ultimately come out of poverty. So the government of India will provide assistance to these entrepreneurs in the rural areas so that their enterprises get stabilized over a period of time. The second statement is right. Any rural poor who is willing to be entrepreneurial and self-reliant is eligible to be part of this program. But preference can be given to the marginalized sections, SCST and rural artisans as well. For everyone who is aspiring to be an entrepreneur, assistance would be given but special emphasis would be given to the SCST, marginalized sections, women as well as the rural artisans. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements about Geological Survey of India. It is headquartered at Mumbai. It is an attached office to the Ministry of Mines. Geological Survey of India has been the sole custodian for all meteorite faults or finds within the Indian territory. Which of the above statements is or correct? The answer to this is 2 and 3 only. Why? That is because the Geological Survey of India is not headquartered at Mumbai but instead it is in Kolkata. When it comes to the second statement, yes, it is under the Ministry of Mines and when we look into the third statement, yes, it is the Geological Survey of India which is made the guardian for all the extraterrestrial bodies. If there is a meteorite that falls within the boundaries of India, the Geological Survey of India has been given the permission to collect the samples of these meteorites and all the evidences about this meteorite. Why does this become important? Meteorites give us an idea about the origin of the solar system, origin of different planets and they also have vast amount of knowledge. So it is the Geological Survey of India which is the guardian to conserve the Indian meteorites for all the scientific exploration projects that can be taken up with respect to the meteorites. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of geological survey of India. The article further makes a mention of one of the species called as Hybodon shark. What is it? This happens to be an extinct group of shark which was a dominant group of fishes in both marine and fluvial environment during the Triassic and early Jurassic time. However, hybodan shark started to decline in marine environment from the middle Jurassic onwards until they formed a relative minor component of open marine shark assemblages. These hybodonts finally became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous time 65 million years ago. So remember, the hybodonts is a kind of shark which is now extinct 
and was present during the Triassic and the early Jurassic time. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to gold monetization scheme, which of the following statements is are correct? All scheduled commercial banks excluding RRBs will be eligible to implement the scheme. Earnings under the gold monetization scheme are exempt from capital gains tax and income tax. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of gold monetization scheme. Let us try and understand what is this gold monetization scheme all about. Let's say you have an amount of about 1 lakh. You want to earn interest. What do you do? You take this amount, keep it in a bank as the fixed deposit. What will the bank do? The bank will pay you an interest which can be about 6%, 7%, 8% annually, whatsoever it is. So you have the money. You are scared that someone might rob it or you want the interest. So you put it in the bank called as the fixed deposit. Similarly, you can also have gold at home. This gold can be monetized. So that is what is called as the gold monetization scheme. So the idle gold that is present at your homes that you have, you would be able to deposit in the commercial banks, which has been designated by the Reserve Bank of India, such that when it is placed in that particular bank, interest will be paid by the bank. This is what is called as gold monetization scheme. Now, if you look into the first option, yes, all scheduled commercial banks excluding the rural banks will be eligible to implement the scheme. So the regional rural banks are not eligible to implement this program. When we look into the second statement, yes, earnings under the gold monetization scheme are exempt from the capital gains tax and income tax. What happens? When you consider this particular scheme, gold is accepted as a raw gold in the banks. You would be able to give gold bars coins, jewelry. So once you deposit, what will the bank do? The bank will start giving you interest. You would be able to deposit the gold for a shorter period of time, which is one to three years. Then you will have medium term and you will also have long term as well. So the money or the interest that is generated cannot be taxed as capital gains tax or the income tax. What are the advantages? You can deposit the idle gold in the Reserve Bank of India's designated bank and one would be able to earn interest from that relevant bank. And the second advantage would be that this gold that you have deposited in the bank will be securely maintained by the bank and you don't have to worry about storing of the gold as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. Exercise Peaceful Mission is a joint military exercise conducted by is it BIMSTEC, Commonwealth countries, NATO or SEO? The answer to this is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of peaceful mission. So what is this? This happens to be a multilateral exercise which is conducted every two years which happens to be a military diplomacy exercise. The exercise will be conducted in Russia. This will enable sharing of the best practices. They would be able to train in counter-terrorism operations and at the same time they would be able to professionally interact with each other, understand the drills and the procedure, establish joint commands and control procedure and ultimately eliminate all types of threats that are emanating from terrorist activities. Now let's look into the next practice question. Who of the following organized a march on the Tanjavur coast to break the salt law in April 1930? Vivo Chidambaram Pillai, C. Rajagopalchari, K. Kamaraj, Annie Besant. The answer to this is C. Rajagopal Chari. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2015. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is production linked incentive scheme for auto industry. We have discussed on this very same platform. The government of India has initiated production linked incentive for multiple sectors. We have discussed about the textile sector. We have also discussed about the electronic sector as well. One of the other production linked 
incentive that the government of India is coming up with is in reference to the auto industry. What would happen? The government would provide production linked incentives to the manufacturers of automobiles. Under this particular scheme, the government will provide incentives to the manufacturers. Why will they provide incentives? That is because these companies will be introducing advanced technologies into the automobile sector. So those companies, whether they are new, that is there are already established automobile sector industries or there might be future industries who might enter this particular domain such industries will be provided incentives in case they are introducing advanced automotive technology for the vehicles and its products. You will have the vehicle manufacturing industries which may introduce remote vehicle shutdowns. They might come up with alternative fuel technology as well. So such companies which are introducing new technologies for the automobile industry will be provided with the incentives. The scheme will have two components. One is the champion OEM incentive scheme, which is a sales value linked scheme applicable on battery electric vehicles and hydrogen fuel cells of all segments. Then we have the component champion incentive scheme, which is a sales value linked scheme applicable on the advanced automobile technology components, completely knockdown, semi knockdown kits, vehicle aggregates of two wheelers, three wheelers, passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles as well as tractor as well. What would be the advantages of the scheme? The government of India will be providing the incentives. So what we will have is more investments made by multiple companies in India. And at the same time, they will introduce new technology in India. This will create new jobs in India. And at the same time, when we are able to manufacture these automobiles, India would also become the export hub of all these industries and at the same time we might also have new industries coming up and this will also promote indigenization further helping the Atmanirbhar Bharat as well. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.